the 11 most disappointing tourist attractions in Europe. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video, it's a live stream. If you're on the live stream, while well, I look forward to chatting with y'all for the next hour, hanging out with my fellow explorers. If you're watching this as an archive, well, make sure you subscribe and click the bell to turn on notifications so you don't miss one of these future live streams that I typically do Monday nights at 8 p.m. But in this video, I'm gonna be talking about your Europe, and I'm going to be talking about tourist attractions in Europe that are disappointing. Europe, it's a big place, and it's home to many amazing tourist attractions that are known around the world, but not all of them are worth the hype. And so in this video, I'm going to share the big attractions in Europe that I was the most disappointed with when I went to them. These are my personal disappointments, but don't let me or any other YouTuber discourage you from visiting these places if you really want to visit them. And when I say tourist attractions, I am speaking about singular attractions. I will not be speaking about cities. I will not be speaking about entire countries. There actually is there one, there's one city I'm gonna talk about when I'm done with the 11, and I've also got a few things after I go through the 11 um, about some other disappointing things that other people said, uh, but I want to make sure the first 11 are ones that I was personally disappointed with. As in most videos, I'll be giving away a Yellow Productions t-shirt sometime live during the stream, and I will also be introducing one of the latest Topher submissions to arrive, but that's coming up in a little bit. So let's go on to the number one most disappointing tourist attraction in Europe. It is the Mona Lisa. Seeing the Mona Lisa in person is truly an unforgettable experience. Why is it unforgettable? Because it's so small and you have to be so far away to see it and there's so many people. When I say there's so many people, this is what I mean when there's so many people. I mean, this is the view you have of the Mona Lisa. You get into the Louvre, you walk through the Louvre, this huge museum in Paris, you snake through it for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, trying to find this painting. You get to this room and there are so many people in it. And you can't even see the Mona Lisa over all the people's heads and hands that are trying to take picture of it. And finally, you worm your way up to the front and then you're like, ah, that, that is the Mona Lisa. It looked a lot better in my high school art book. It looked a lot better on the computer when I looked at it. It looked a lot better in this picture right here because this picture on this video is closer than you're going to get of the Mona Lisa. All right, the second most disappointing tourist attraction in Europe is the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower also in Paris, France. The Eiffel Tower has frustratingly long lines. Frustratingly long lines to buy tickets for the elevator and then the second elevator. Uh, and when I say frustratingly long lines, this is a shot or picture of the lines as taken from that first viewing platform. So like in the Eiffel Tower, if we go back to this, uh, there's the legs of the Eiffel Tower and then there's kind of the base that's up there, right? That's what you sort of take the first elevator. You can take a staircase up there too. So these shots are right from there. And all those little people like this, those are the lines either to buy tickets or to get on the elevator. It is crazy. There are so many people that watch my video about climbing the Eiffel Tower in Paris, France, and they leave a comment, something to the effect of, Oh my gosh, I had no idea how long, long this line was going to be. Now, if you are going to see the Eiffel Tower, I suggest you buy a ticket in advance or you can eat at the restaurant. If you eat at the restaurant, then you take a different elevator to get up there. Uh, and the other thing that's disappointing about the Eiffel Tower, and you can't really see it from this vantage point, but down there where those lines are, because there's so many people, there are tons of people standing around selling touristy crap keychains, replicas of Eiffel Towers. I mean, it is the most touristy stuff you've ever seen. And they are not people that have like a shop or a stand. They are people merely standing around there on the sidewalk. That really adds to the lousy ambiance. And I really think the best way to see the Eiffel Tower is from a distance. The best way to see the Eiffel Tower is just like this, not actually so much on it. Uh, and no one says, really, the Eiffel Tower? Yes, the Eiffel Tower. Uh, XXXY says, does Eiffel Tower have skipped the line? Your best bet is to book your ticket ahead of time. 
Uh, OC girl thought the Mona Lisa was okay, probably because she already knew what to expect, uh, being small. Uh, and uh, Luis says, uh, I'm guessing you are not much of a France fan. So by the way, I actually did want to make a point about this and say I am not bashing on France. I just, I tried to organize these things by country, and so the first two are about France, but the next ones are not about France. And so actually, I have nothing against Paris. I have nothing against France. Actually, I enjoy France. I enjoy Paris. I think France kind of gets a bum rap in the tourist world. People say, you know, the French people are rude, that they hate foreigners, that they hate Americans. And actually, I think people, yeah, in the tourism industry in Paris, they can be short because there's so many tourists, but French people as a whole are great people, right? And when you actually get to know real French people. And the real French people I know, they all say, yeah, Chris, that bad service that you got in that restaurant, that's not just catered to tourists. That's actually, that's the bad service that we French get too. That's just how that restaurant particularly is. Um, Susan for Travel says, hey, a better place to see the Eiffel Tower. It's in Las Vegas. Much shorter lines. Um, Jazz This says, seeing the Mona Lisa in the movie Elf drawn on an Etch-A-Sketch is truly impressive. That does sound truly impressive. Uh, Melissa says, can you do a video on the best restaurants or cheap eats in Paris? I literally have no idea where to go, even with research. Uh, I'm not heading there anytime soon, so that might be a bit of a challenge. Um, so, uh, I would just say there's this, um, oh, what's the district? Like the Marais, it's like the Spanish district. There's a lot of kebab shops. Sandwiches are always good. Baguettes are always good. Um, Stinger says, another problem around the Eiffel Tower in Paris are aggressive scam artists. That pretty much happens, uh, Pretty much any time you get a lot of tourists. Um, Chu Cruz says, I really enjoy seeing the Eiffel Tower from all over Paris, especially at night. It looks great. I agree, visiting it is not so great. All right, so the next comment, uh, and actually I've seen this a few times, and maybe Jordan Grant was the person who said it, but uh, mannequin piss in Brussels. And Jonathan, you must be reading my mind because the third most disappointing tourist attraction in Europe is the Mannequin Piss in Brussels. So this is the most famous attraction in Brussels. It is a naked boy, I'll leave that up so you know what the title is. It is a naked boy urinating into the basin of a fountain. It is said to embody Brussels people's sense of humor. And Mannequin Piss literally means little man peas. That's the name of this statue. And it's really small. It is 61 centimeters small. That is about two feet tall. Uh, the original statue actually was built and placed in 1619, but it was stolen. So the one that you see there when you go uh, is a replica that's been on display since 1965. And it's another one, just like the Mona Lisa, you get there and there are all these people around it and you're trying to fight to see that little boy that's peeing. It is, it is really, it is really not worth it. Um, Life's of Mitch says the whole of Brussels was terrible. Yeah, Brussels, I think being the capital of the EU, right? It's one of those places that's much more of a, of a business destination than it actually is uh, a tourist destination. Um, Drew asked me what my favorite beer from Belgium is. I'm really more of a, a teetotaler than a beer drinker. And uh, let's see, today, what am I drinking? Today, I am drinking a UCC milk tea, uh, Assam tea, mild taste and sweet flavor which is pretty good. Um, so uh, Kathy says she's never heard of that one in Brussels. It, it in fact does exist. Um, no one uh, thinks the title is pretty funny. I think so. Tanner uh, agrees that Brussels as a whole isn't that great. Other cities like Ghent or uh, Bruges are far better. I probably um, pronounced that uh, improperly. Uh, and um, so Luis says... Um, I vote the mermaid woman in Copenhagen. Well, you know, you know, the fourth most disappointing tourist attraction in Europe. It's the little mermaid in Copenhagen in Denmark. It is a four foot tall sculpture of a mermaid. Yeah, that's it. It has a really ugly industrial backdrop right there. Uh, and um, it's fairly far from the city. I mean, this is an attraction that people go 
far, far away to see this mermaid. Uh, and you can see when you get there, there are a ton of people there to see that mermaid. And you get there and you take all the transit to get there and you're like, really? That's, that's what I'm there for? I'm there for this mermaid? I will tell you, the way we saw the mermaid, and I think we, this was actually a good way of seeing it, you can take like boat tours uh, through Copenhagen, and we saw the mermaid on a boat tour. And that was good because we didn't have to like schlep all the way out there, but it was one, it was kind of like the final thing on the boat tour was like, oh, and there's this little mermaid, and we're like, that, that's the, that's, that's the little mermaid? <laughs> OC girl says, uh, what happened to my Hui Lao Shan drink? So yeah, so uh, last night, OC girl went to uh, Hui Lao Shan, which uh, just recently opened up in uh, the Southern California area. It is a Hong Kong dessert cafe that specializes in mango drinks. And uh, she got me this big mango drink and I, uh, I drank it all last night. It was so good. Mm. So I don't have it left for tonight, but I do have this milk tea. So uh, that's that's what happened to that one. Um, Captain Clam says the whole of Canberra should make this list, which of course is uh, in Australia, right? So uh, that would have to be when I do a video about the most disappointing tourist attractions in Australia. Um, Mark says, I hope nothing from Spain hits the list. Uh, well, you'll be disappointed because there is something from Spain on the list. Um, D, D, D. Djlachi, the boy 999. I don't know how to say your name, but there you go. Um, El Vagabond says Versailles is overrated. Uh, I think, I mean, Versailles is rated highly, but I mean, Versailles, I actually, I enjoyed Versailles. I feel like it is a huge palace and the rooms are pretty nice. We also, we rented a um, like golf cart to go through like the gardens in the back of Versailles. Thought Versailles, which I thought was pretty fun. Peter Dew also likes UCC, including their iced coffees, which is the drink that I'm drinking right now. Um, all right, and uh, no one says any Vegas videos coming soon. Nothing at the moment. I do have a bunch of Disneyland queued up coming soon. Um, what kind of Vegas videos do you want me to do? No one. I could certainly dedicate a live stream to one if you tell me what you are interesting at. And Kathy says there's nothing disappointing in Australia. You're probably right. Australia is just, uh, just an amazing place. Uh, all right, so let's go on to... The fifth most disappointing tourist attraction. Somebody said this one earlier, uh, and I said I said I wasn't going to list any cities, but I'm listing this one. We're moving on to Italy as a country, uh, and so Venice. Uh, Venice is disappointing. Um, actually, OC Girl and I, we had a really good time in Venice, but the most disappointing thing for us in Venice is what you see right there. It's the gondola ride. The gondola ride was disappointing. Why was it disappointing? We actually didn't ride the gondola. Why didn't we ride the gondola? Gondola rides are like $100 for like 40 minutes. I mean, you have this picture of Venice, at least I have this picture of Venice, riding on a gondola, all by yourself down a canal. It's super romantic. And then we get there and it's super expensive. That's crazy. And I'll say um, the food in Italy is usually really amazing, but Venice is where we had some really bad meals. Um, I think 90% of the food in Venice is kind of overpriced tourist, tourist garbage, often frozen and microwaved. Um, and if you were going to Venice and you were expecting a peaceful time, well, you'll find out that Venice uh, can actually be super crowded uh, and it can be more crowded than Times Square. And many people report Venice in the summer can be quite smelly. Now, the pro tip I'm gonna give you, the part that we really enjoyed about Venice was getting outside of Venice to some of the neighboring islands, in particular, Murano and Burano. These are two islands that are near Venice. You've probably heard of Murano glass. That comes from this island. It's like a, like a 30 minute like boat ride from Venice. Uh, if you're going to Venice, definitely take a couple days and make sure you spend the day trip visiting a couple of those islands. And then if you want to um, avoid the crowds and you also want to avoid some of the smells of the, the canals, uh, then I would suggest um, visiting in February. Uh, an OC girl says, we also went to Venice before we became travel pros, which is true. We kind of went there and it was it was one of our first big international trips together. I think if we went back, we wouldn't eat such crappy food, but we were what I would call probably um, the typical tourist to be like, well, we're just gonna walk around and we're gonna find some good restaurants, right? 
No, walking around Venice, just really find bad restaurants. And when I say they're microwave, they're microwave. But one of my, one of my memories of Venice, the first restaurant we went to, uh, we wanted to get some water. You know, and I, I, many of you who've been to Italy, I'm sure you've had this experience. You go into a restaurant, you ask for some water. And uh, then they say, what kind of water? It's like, uh, tap water? And I, ah, no tap water. Okay, what, what do you have? Well, the water is gas, no gas. Gas, no gas. Do you want water? Gas, no gas. Gas, no gas? What, what is that? Of course, they're saying, do you want water with gas or no gas? Which means sparkling water or still water. That was the first time we ever heard that phrase. It probably took us a good minute with this waiter to understand and then brings them out to be like gas or no gas. Ah, no gas. Hmm. And then realized we had to pay like five euros for that bottle of water with uh, no gas. Um, Stinger says they did the gondola really late and it was fantastic, quiet, and beautiful. Did you pay the 80 or 100 euros for it? Uh, the, the tip, if you do want to take a gondola, maybe not the romantic one, but just ride on it, there are these things called traghettos, and they're like commuter gondolas. They're gondolas that'll just take you one way across the Grand Canal. They cost like a euro, so that is what we ended up doing. Um, Nicholas says, is the Venetian in Vegas better than the real-life Venice? Um... Different. I mean, I really like the Venetian in Vegas. It's cheesy, but it's cheesy done well. Um, I think the food in the Venetian, at least the food I've had in the Venetian is better than the food we had in Venice in Vegas. Um, but uh, the, uh, the gondola singers are better in Venice than they are in the Venetian. Um, and Kathy says, Venice is lovely, but the gondola ride is very stinky. Gravel says, don't worry, Venice will be gone soon. Um, Brian says he wants me to do a live stream on quality and inexpensive hotels in Vegas. Uh, that is one that I'm going to plan to do as a recorded one. Um, so uh, if you have other topics, let me know what you want me to do. No one says uh, anything is fine. No, be a little more specific. Uh, no one. Uh, and uh, I'll try to think about how to do that. Um, James asks if I've ever been to Sweden. I have been to Sweden. I've really enjoyed Sweden. I enjoy Swedish meatballs. Melissa says that's pretty funny about the sparkling water. Uh, and then Captain Clam says, law, gas or no gas. It is exactly what they say. And you'll go to like convenience stores and they'll actually have signs over the water that'll say gas, no gas. That's how they describe it. Uh, Daniel says, the Hofbrau House in Munich. Yeah, that's a popular tourist site. For those of you who aren't familiar with the Hofbrau House in Munich, it's like Munich's big beer hall, German restaurant, tuba bands, this and that. It can be pretty touristy. I think it's kind of a neat place, though. I think their food's fun. I think the bands are fun, uh, though you certainly do pay for it. But Daniel, tell me, why were you disappointed about the Hofbrau House? Um, the... Uh, the Uniplex uh, loved Venice, that's uh, great, but uh, was almost ripped off. How are you almost ripped off? Uh, and Gulch says, are you still collecting pandas? I am still collecting pandas. Casting for pandas is open, and Gulch, since you brought it up, let me take this moment to introduce Topher submission number 10. Topher submission number 10 right here is a red panda. Look at this. This red panda is from Seattle, Washington. The red panda is courtesy of Chelsea Eric and their dog, Christian. So Chelsea, Eric, and Christian, thank you very much. They went to the Seattle Zoo specifically to pick up a panda. When they got there, they found the only pandas that they had were red pandas. And so they figured, what the heck? And they sent the red panda over. So Chelsea, Eric, and Christian, thank you very much. By the way, if any of you uh, have still a Topher to submit, submissions are still open uh, for Topher's replacement who was stolen in London. If you want to send in a Topher, you can send it to uh, me at 1180 Rosecrans Street, number 201, San Diego, California, 92106. Uh, actually, I got a couple more boxes today that I haven't opened yet, so there's a few more Topher's coming soon. I'll be introducing them uh, in the next live stream. And uh, Tony says, wow, that, that is a unique panda. Yeah, when this, when this came out of, um, when this, when this came out of the box, sort of like, you know, the first thing I saw was the tail, and I'm like, pandas don't have tails. And then I read, I read the label up here, which says, the red panda or lesser panda is a mammal native to the 
eastern Himalayas and southwestern China. Red pandas feed mainly on bamboo, but also eat eggs, birds, and insects. They are solitary, shy, and secretive animals, mainly active from dusk to dawn, and are largely sedentary during the day. So there you go. You have learned something about the red panda today. All right. Uh, Carla says, I'm still sad over Topher. Carla, we are sad over Topher as well. Um, Terry asks if Lisbon is overrated. Uh, oh, Seagirl and I, we really enjoyed Lisbon. Uh, I got some Lisbon videos. I've got other Portugal videos, so you can check out my Portugal playlist. Uh, Roger wants to know what the best castle to visit is. The best castle to visit is in Germany, and it is called the, uh, New Schwanstein Castle. New Schwanstein. Um, the New Schwanstein Castle is, uh, like what the... What the Disneyland, um, like, castle was actually, um, modeled after. And if you want to see my new Schwanstein video, I'm gonna post a link in the chat right there. Um, that's the link to my new Schwanstein video. Copy that, check that out later. But that's our favorite castle that we've been to in, uh, in Europe. That's in Germany, uh, and it's about an hour, hour and a half outside of Munich. Abel wants to know if I've ever been to Disneyland Paris. We have never been to Euro Disney. We've been to uh, Disneyland here. I've been to Disney World, and then OC Girl and I together, we've been to Tokyo Disney and Tokyo Disney Sea. Um, XXXYYY says, uh, anything bad in Rome? Hey, let's talk about Rome. That's great. So the, um... The sixth, sixth most disappointing thing in Europe, it's not all of Rome, but it's Rome in the summer. Rome in the summer, the crowds in Rome in the summer, they are soul crushing, soul crushing crowds. There are so many people. Rome is so hot. And you know, you will see pictures like this of Rome. You'll see pictures like this of the Colosseum. This picture must have been taken like at sunrise. You can tell how low the sun is when nobody was there. When you get there, there's gonna be way more people. It's crazy. If you've ever read like a Rick Steves guidebook, Rick Steve will tell you if you're buying Coliseum tickets, don't buy them at the Coliseum because the line will be like an hour to buy them from some other place and you can use them there. It's true, the lines at the Coliseum are crazy and that is what the line at the Coliseum actually looks like, full of people. So if you wanna go to Rome, don't go in the summer. You will just be super hot and you'll be full of crowds. The hotels will be super expensive. It will not be enjoyable because Rome is not really a city that handles lots of crowds all that well. Um, Brian uh, said he'd been to the new Schwanstein castle. It's the real life Cinderella castle. It is, it's pretty cool. Um, Jade asked if I check Russia. I have never been to Russia. And Luis wants to know how Scottish castles compare. I've never been to Scotland, uh, even though Rainey is actually a Scottish last name. Uh, all right. So the, uh, another one in Rome, since we're talking about Rome, this is the seventh most disappointing tourist attraction in Europe. It is the Vatican. And in particular, not the whole Vatican, but the line for the Vatican. Oh my gosh. When we went to the Vatican, the first day we tried to go to the Vatican, um, like they, like they stop admitting guests at like 2 p.m. Like something super early. So we had planned to go there for the afternoon and they were closed. And then we went back the next day and the lot, I've never, I've never stood in a longer line. I think the line for the Vatican was longer than the lines at like San Diego Comic Con to go in like the halls where the, the movie stars are. Uh, that's, that's like, this is the line for, um, like the Basilica. Uh, which isn't even the line to go in the main part of the Vatican that has, like, um, you know, the Sistine Chapel and all those things. Line for the Vatican, super crazy. Um, Stinger503 said, found the inside of the Colosseum boring, would have rather toured the Vatican. Did you end up touring the Vatican, Stinger503? I will say, the inside of the Vatican, it was actually really neat. It was really neat to go in there. It was neat to see the Sistine Chapel. Though, what I remember funny about the Sistine Chapel is a small little place, and there's a lot of people in there, and every, like, minute or so, the guards will say loudly, no photo, no video, shh because it gets loud and they say shh and then it quiets down but then it starts to get louder again at that point they have to say no photo no video shh 
they could totally just have this on like a recorded track because they literally just repeated that phrase over and over and over again. Um, no one says for the Vegas video, I should uh, do it maybe about good tourist places. Please dedicate it to Grandma Lee. All right, no one, I'll, I'll think about how I do something like that. Uh, Tanner says I should do a soccer stadium tour. Oh, it's an interesting idea. Uh, I'm not a huge soccer fan. Um, Brandon Torres says long lines are deal breakers. Long lines can be soul sucking for sure. Um, the Uniplex says uh, when I asked him about uh, being scanned in Venice, he said the hotel charged three times the hotel tax. That is crazy. That is uh, sad. Uh, Kathy says. I've been to all these places in Rome. Very fascinating. Loved Rome. Hmm. So about loving Rome. Actually, I really love Rome. So please do not take away from this to not go to Rome. Sometimes people watch these videos and get the wrong impression. I love Rome. Some of my favorite food in the world is in Rome. Um, you know, I never used to understand, uh, like, when people would go to Italian restaurants and order, like, the caprese, like the mozzarella cheese and the tomatoes, because every time I got it here in the U.S., it was just sort of meh. But then in Rome, I ordered the caprese with the buffalo mozzarella, like the mozzarella cheese that was fresh made in Naples, made of the buffalo milk, the buffalo milk to make the mozzarella cheese. Oh my gosh, I, I was addicted. We Every restaurant we went to, we ordered the caprese. And like good mozzarella, it's not dry, it's not hard. When you cut the fresh mozzarella, like liquid will come out, and then when you take your knife away, the liquid will get sucked back into it. So delicious. Um, and uh, e Ewan says, uh, I never thought I'd see a line longer than the Hall H line. Yeah, that's the line at San Diego Comic Con. Uh, you will find uh, the lines for the Vatican and the Coliseum to be pretty long. The Uniplex says, don't go to Rome in the summer. Right, now there, that's, uh, that is definitely, if you are going to Rome, don't go in the summer. Um, Time for a kiss. One word phrase to describe UK, France, Italy, Spain, Germany, Netherlands, Sweden, USA. Uh, I, I don't know. That's hard, and that requires thinking. Um, but uh, one word to describe the UK. Robbed, because I was robbed there. Uh, one word to describe France. Um, hmm, bonjour. Uh, one word to describe Italy. Delicious. One word to describe Spain churros. One word to describe Germany, Oktoberfest. One word to describe the Netherlands, mm, windmills. One word to describe Sweden, Vikings. One word to describe the USA, hamburgers. How about that? All right. Um, Brandon's recommendation to go to Rome is to go during the springtime. And no one said, if you get the fresh prosciutto meat, you'll be in love. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Tony says, how's Europe in the winter? Cold, uh, but actually Rome, Italy is a great place to go in the winter because it doesn't really, doesn't really snow in those places. Now, if you're going to like Northern Europe, you know, the, the Swedens of the world, it's going to be really cold. And actually a lot of European cities, uh, kind of close down a lot of their tourist attractions during the winter. Um, so you really... Generally kind of want to go in the swing season, shoulder season, right, spring and fall. Those are generally the best times to visit, um, to visit a lot of the European cities. Uh, all right, let's go on to the next number. We are now on number eight, and we are moving countries. We're going to move to the United Kingdom. And uh, the first disappointing tourist attraction in the United Kingdom, and this is the eighth most tourist, disappointing tourist attraction in Europe, is the London Bridge. We've all heard the song, right? London Bridge is falling down, London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. So the bridge must be famous, right? No, it's ugly. This is what the bridge looked like when it was built. Kind of a cool classic bridge. This is what the bridge looks like today. This is really kind of sad. You get there and you're like, this is, this is London Bridge? There must be, there must be something wrong. But if you want... Like, the cool bridge, what's right next to London Bridge, is this bridge. Uh, this is the Tower Bridge. If you saw the picture I posted on Facebook today as the reminder for this live stream, it was a picture that OC Girl and I took in front of this 
oh, eight years ago or something like that, as I had my hat and my trench coat. That was another one we weren't super pro travelers, but the Tower Bridge, that's the classic bridge in London. And if you want to see the original London Bridge, this is the original London Bridge. This, and it's not black and white, it's in color. Where is this? This is in Lake Havasu, Arizona. There was a businessman that bought this bridge and disassembled it and moved it to the U.S. in Arizona and reassembled it. So if you're going to London to see the London Bridge, you will be quite disappointed. And Kathy says, when people think of London Bridge, they mean the Tower Bridge. Probably because they think London Bridge and they've seen that picture of the Tower Bridge and they're like, that must be the London Bridge. Kanisha says, no, it's ugly. It, 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 that other one is pretty ugly. Uh, and Cyborg Man says, you might as well go to Tower Bridge. That's the bridge you should go to. Um, let's see. Uh, and uh, Moises says, there's a great London Bridge replica in Lake Havasu. This is it, and it is not a replica. This is the original London Bridge, stone by stone, brick by brick, taken apart, transported across the ocean to the U.S. and rebuilt. Not the replica, that's the original. Uh, Greg wants to know if Switzerland is as expensive to visit as everything I read online says it is. Greg, Switzerland is quite expensive. Um... You can check out my videos on Switzerland. I have quite a few. I've got videos on Zurich, Bern, Lucerne, uh, videos on going up the Jungfrau, Mount Pilatus, and also to the Schiltorn. So check that out. Um, Kathy says, we did a Contiki tour around Europe, saw lots of fantastic places. That's cool. I've never taken a Contiki tour. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, the Uniplex says, we found Kensington Palace disappointing. What did you find uh, disappointing about Kensington Palace, Uniplex? Bill Presser says, Ikea had lots of panda bears that looked like Topher. Hit up your local Ikea store. Hmm, we were in our local Ikea store a couple weeks ago, uh, but we did not see any pandas that looked quite like Topher. Uh, no one wants to know what the best European country is. Um, so I think one of my favorite cities in uh, Europe is Vienna in Austria. Uh, and I might be biased on some of the best food. I think the best food is in Italy. Uh, but I also think really good food is in the Czech Republic. I'm half Czech, so I like a lot of meat and potatoes and meat and dumplings. Prague is this neat old world city, though it's been... I don't know if, if overrun by tourists is the right phrase, but there are a lot of tourists in Prague now. But I think Prague is a really neat kind of medieval city. Uh, and there were questions about Portugal earlier. We really enjoyed Portugal. Um, we started in Lisbon, and we did like uh, four nights in Lisbon. Then we rented a car, and we drove up the coast, uh, stopping in... Um, Nazare, uh, Coimbra, which is a big university town, and then ending up in uh, Porto. Porto is the other big city in Portugal, but Portugal was neat to visit because it's not really on the beaten tourist path. Not many tourists go there, and so things were actually very reasonably priced. I'm not a big beer drinker, but you could get a beer and a glass about this size for like a euro. If you're in Paris or London, a beer this size will probably cost you eight euros. If you're in Switzerland, it'll probably cost you 20. I'm probably exaggerating slightly, but not all that much. Uh, and so Lisbon's a great place to go because it's inexpensive and not overrun. Um, all right, so let's go on to the next disappointing tourist attraction. This is the ninth most disappointing tourist attraction. Oh, hey, there's one more of that London Bridge, by the way, looking at it in Lake Havasu from overhead. Uh, this is um, This is Piccadilly Circus. Uh, they say it's like the Times Square of London. But Piccadilly Circus really doesn't even compare. I mean, it's a pretty small square. The buildings are three stories tall. Yes, there is one light-up screen, but it's nowhere near, it's nowhere near Times Square. Uh, Ken Lewis says, why, why no presentation? Why no presentation of what? I have, a, I have a presentation right here. What do you mean? Um, so, uh... Let's see, the Uniplex says, 
the reason he did not like Kensington Palace is because it's boring, dark, not a lot of rooms. The only highlight was Diana's dresses. Tanner asked a little bit more about Portugal, asking if there's good beaches in Portugal. Portugal has a lot of really good beaches. Uh, the one we visited was in Nazare. Uh, you can check out my video on that. Nazare, N-A-Z-A-R-E. Just search for that, and Yellow Productions, and you will find it. Um, all right, so there were uh, some conversation about the London Eye. Maybe we'll get to that maybe we'll get to that in a minute. Grovel says, I wasn't paying attention and thought Chris was sipping on a beer. It's a milk tea. It is. It's a UCC. Hmm. Milk tea. Uh, Melissa says, I honestly can't wait to go to Piccadilly Circus in November. Yeah, Melissa, and so all right again, when when I say when I say it's disappointing, I don't I don't mean don't go. Like I went there and I'm like, cool, I've I've been to Piccadilly Circus now. And I'm like, hmm. But um, but it's not that amazing. And actually, when OC Girl and I were in London recently, and I talked about Piccadilly Circus being the Times Square, she's like, "What? Why didn't we go?" And I'm like, "Cause it's it's not that interesting. Like we went to a lot more other interesting places." Stinger five hundred three says Trafalgar Square is better. I agree with you. Um, and uh, right, and Cyborg Man says that. Um, Piccadilly Circus is more of a busy road. That is a good description of it. And related to Times Square, when I say Piccadilly Circus is worse than Times Square, Lucy Girl points out that Times Square was on my most disappointing tourist attractions in the USA. So that really tells you what I think about Piccadilly Circus. Greg says, yes, Piccadilly was a waste of time. It felt too touristy and crowded. Uh, Joe says, if you really want to experience rural Europe, what are the best three countries to pick? Um, rural Europe. Number one, Ireland. Go to Ireland, rent a car, and drive around the hills of Ireland and check out the sheep. Uh, I think number two, you could go to France. France has a lot of interesting countryside. Um, and, uh, I don't know, number three, I'm going to say Germany. Uh, I think Germany is great because... Like, you can drive on the Autobahn, and you can rent, like, a nice German car. We enjoyed renting the car, driving out from Munich to Neuschwanstein. Liam asks if I plan on coming back to Australia. I want more Melbourne videos to watch. I'd like to sometime, Liam. Uh, I don't know when that will be, though. Uh, <laughs> Ian says, as someone who lives and works in London, I didn't even know Piccadilly Circus was an attraction. All right, that... That says it all right there. So, Ian, thank you very much. Um, Sarah says, I'm going to Paris and London. What other city should I visit nearby? Amsterdam, Brussels, Munich. Uh, I think all three of those are good cities. Uh, my other recommendation for you in London is to take a day trip to Oxford. Oxford is a university town, uh, and when you're in Oxford, take like a take like a walking tour of the Oxford University campus. That was one of our favorite things we did on our last trip to London. Celestial so One wants to know, what's my favorite country, not just in Europe? Uh, my favorite country is Japan. You could probably guess that by the number of Japan videos that we have on this channel. Uh, we have over a hundred videos on Japan. We probably go to Japan, if not every year, every other year. Cyborg Man uh, was also very disappointed by the River Thames. That's the main river that runs through London. I can see how you would say uh, that could be disappointing. Um, and no one says people say the London subways are an experience. They're gross and bad. I don't. I don't think the London subways are awful. I've been in way more awful subways. Uh, I think the New York City subway is way worse. So is the Boston subway. Um, London is passable. Mark says what London is good for. London is good for drinking. There are a lot of pubs in London. Cyborg Man says Buckingham Palace is also disappointing. Yeah, let's talk about Buckingham Palace. And let me see if I can. Let me see if I can play this video correctly now.
Related to being disappointing, that's one of those things that you go see the changing of the guards, and then you're like, okay, I've seen that. I think I'm good. You know, but related to pickpockets, oh, you couldn't hear me over the video playing. That's super annoying, because the little audio things on my thing were going, and I wasn't hearing the video. Well, let me say that again, since you couldn't hear me saying that. So, the, um, the changing of the guards is disappointing, because you have to get there an hour early before the changing of the guards. The changing of the guards itself takes an hour, uh, and there's so many pickpockets at the changing of the guards that the police actually come up and say to you, um, hey, watch your stuff because the pickpockets are watching you. And then they'll tell you, make sure you put your backpack on your front because there's so many pickpockets. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's like, I'm glad I saw it, but this video that I have of the changing of the guards, and if you want to watch the whole thing, you can find it on my Facebook page. You can probably just watch that. I condensed the hour into three minutes because three minutes is about what all the action is. Uh, all right, so let's go on to uh, the... Okay, and so, no, some other people said Buckingham Palace was disappointing, and Buckingham Palace, actually this time we went to London, we went in Buckingham Palace, because uh, if you go in the summer, you can go inside the state rooms of Buckingham Palace, and actually, I think that was pretty cool going in the state rooms. Uh, okay, back to the PowerPoint. We are on number 11 now, which is the London Eye, the London Eye. Many people have said this, and so you'll be happy that it's here, the London Eye. It is the big Ferris wheel that is in London. It's right on the River Thames. Um, this right here, this building, this is the Marriott County Hall. It's a really neat hotel. Uh, we've stayed there before. I have a video review of that if you want to check it out. But the London Eye, the lines are long, the views aren't really that great, and it's expensive. By the way, if you want to see good views from London, watch my video on free things to do in London. I show two much better spots to get views that are free, and you have better views. One that we saw this time that's not in that video and it's not free, but it has some of the best views I've ever seen of London was St. Paul's Cathedral. Cathedral. St. Paul's Cathedral, you can climb up to the top of the dome, and that's where you get the best view of, uh, that's where you get the best view of London. The Uniplex says, tons of pickpockets now in London. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, and of course, in my case, right, they didn't, didn't pick our paw pocket. They stole our whole camera bag, which was very sad. Um... Let's see, uh, Celestial One said uh, they got their wallet with $400 stolen in Vegas. I'm sorry, Celestial One, how did that happen to you? Did they steal it out of your, like, out of your bag or out of your pocket? How did it get stolen? Uh, Megan says, going to Prague and Copenhagen in December. Fourth visit to Europe this year. Any recommendations? Uh, Megan, check out my video on uh Czech food in Prague. Uh, I have a couple recommendations on places to eat, but my favorite place to eat in Paris is called Havelska Corona. Um, I probably need to type that out. So, uh, ha Havelska Corona. I just put it in the chat. If you're going to go eat at one place, go eat at that place. It's near the astronomical clock. I'm sure you're going to be. There's a tourist. Check that place out. Uh, check it out for lunch. It's kind of a Czech cafeteria. Uh, you will enjoy it. Uh, Melissa says, I'm going to take pictures of the London Eye for sure, but not go on it. Yeah, it's a cool thing to take pictures of and with, and I've got pictures of it like in my thumbnail video. Um... Tanner wants to know if uh, Northern Ireland is uh, worth seeing. Uh, we have not made it to Northern Ireland. Um, and Jordan says, yeah, for some of the best views, visit the Sky Garden. Uh, and you do need to make a reservation. It's free. You do need to make a reservation. It is in my video about the best free things to do in London. Um, uh, Luis, uh, or Louis, uh, Louis V says, Copenhagen's amazing, such friendly people of the Danish. I agree with you. They are cool. Paul says, have you been to Versailles? Uh, we have. We enjoyed Versailles. Uh, okay, so now let me talk about some other, hmm, some other disappointing tourist attractions. Uh, these are not ones that I've been to, but they're ones that a lot of my other videos, or just a lot of discussion with people, they've been 
disappointed by these. Uh, and so one of the ones you saw go through the comments here a few times if you're on the live stream, Stonehenge. A lot of people have been really disappointed by Stonehenge. It's two hours from London, it has a hefty admission fee, and many people say you can't even get close. Uh, people also, actually, I think I, whoa, we have to go through a few of these. Sorry, flashing these pictures so I can get back to, get back to where I was here. Whoa, all right. Oh, oh, such a giveaway now. All right, next one, the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Uh, it's in Italy. It's in the middle of nowhere. People pretty much say they get there and they take that, like, classic picture with the, with the tower where they're, like, leaning against the tower. Anyway, you could probably just probably look at that and know what it looks like. Uh, Madame Tussauds Museum. This is a wax museum. Their main locations in London. They have museums all over. Many people said they felt they were disappointed. Um, I've been in the one in Vegas. It was interesting for like 20 minutes to walk through. Uh, it's not, it was not worth the admission fee. Um, now, uh, this is one that I disagree with, but a lot of people say they were disappointed by this, and actually it made a, it made like a top 10 list by some airline that was like looking at the most disappointing tourist attractions in Europe, and a lot of people said they felt that the interior of the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, Spain was disappointing. This church, it is the most famous church in Spain. It is in progress. It's being built for like forever and a day. Um, I don't have a picture of the inside, uh, but the inside I think looks really neat. You do have to pay to go inside, uh, but we did not, we did not find that disappointing. Um, and, um, Checkpoint Charlie in Berlin, Germany, uh, remnant of the wars. This is one that people say it's just a disappointing tourist attraction. Now, there is one place, uh, that... I said I wasn't going to mention cities, but there's going to be one city that I'm going to mention. And actually, I've got a little bit of a video to show you. Uh, this video is about two minutes long. Uh, and this video is titled Naples, Italy, the City of Trash. I have heard, I had heard so many amazing things about Naples. People like Chris, I mean, there's Rome, there's this. But to, like, experience the real Italy, you have to go... To Naples and so I wanted to share this video with you from times past on my channel two and a half minutes I'm gonna play it and then I'll come back I'm not gonna talk over it because you all won't be able to hear me if I talk over it uh, and uh, then stay tuned because the question to win the yellow productions t-shirt is gonna be right after this video about Naples a really disappointing place uh. some cities are famous for their sites Naples has quite a few nice ones uh. Some cities are... There is a big stink... Yellow Productions presents... Naples, Italy, the city of trash. Almost everywhere you go in this town, there is a big stinking pile of trash. Some cities are famous for their sites. Naples has quite a few nice ones, but it's most famous for its trash problem. Naples is actually quite a beautiful city once you get away from the trash. It's situated on the Bay of Naples next to Mount Vesuvius with lots of history, lots of old churches, and old castles. But boy, the trash is a problem. Since 2007, there's been a lack of landfill space and also mafia control of waste management, causing trash to pile up everywhere throughout the city. People try to put their trash in a dumpster, but when the dumpster's full, well, they just put it next to the trash can or the dumpster. In this picture, there's one trash can right in the middle where my finger is. Incredible. Here, the trash is overflowing on two trash cans, but at some point, people just say screw it and put their trash anywhere. Now, Naples gotten to the point that wherever there's space for trash, trash will appear. At this point, it's all fair game on the sides of street corners, in front of churches, at a construction site, next to where cars park, and then the wind comes and blows the trash everywhere else. Like this trash, it was probably in those dumpsters at one point in time. Some stuff that doesn't fit in the dumpsters and just ends up on the street are uh, furniture and mattresses. I saw quite a few mattresses that looked like they've been on the street for a long time. But there are some entrepreneurs with all this trash. This guy driving the blue truck is driving around between dumpsters to pick up sellable trash. 
maybe at a thrift store, a garage sale, who knows. In July of 2011, the European Union has actually considered imposing trade sanctions on Italy due to the trash problem in Naples. They're trying to fix it. Uh, Italy has made deals with Germany to export some of its trash and is trying to open new landfills and trash incinerators, uh, but that is obviously still a ways to come. But don't let the trash spoil a trip to Naples for you. There's still wonderful pizza and some beautiful sights, just with some trash in between. <laughs> I should actually unmute the microphone so you can hear me. All right, so there we go. Naples, Italy, the city of trash. Super, super disappointing. Um, okay, so to win the Yellow Productions t-shirt, the question is, and you notice that was young Chris, when was that video uploaded to YouTube? The first person to give the correct date, and by date, I mean month, day, year. If you are, you give the correct day, the first person with the correct day is gonna win, month, day, year, or the person who gets closest to it is going to win. So while you guys are uh, putting some things in the chat about when that video was uploaded, um, I wanted to give a shout out to uh, Connor Gillum and Bethan. Uh, Connor left a message on my Facebook page that says, me and my girlfriend just finished our first trip to America and want to thank you so much for your content. As if it wasn't for you, we may have never had the insight to visit the places we did. All right, well, thank you very much for that, uh, Connor. And so there, there is your shout out. Uh, so I'm seeing a lot of people guessing years, but you need to guess month day and year month day and year that's what you need to guess uh and um you know the way you could find it and actually there we go we have we have a winner we have a winner 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 the winner is stinger 503 who guessed the correct date actually found the correct date uh stinger 503 said july 31st 2011 so no doubt you found that video so that's how you knew the date so well done stinger 503 you win a yellow productions t-shirt i'll send it to you anywhere in the world that you want it and the way you can let me know where to send it is uh you can shoot me an email to chris at yellow.net with two w's or you can send me a message on facebook let me know what size shirt you want and what address you want me to send it to uh a honorable second place goes to jazz this it came in right after stinger 503 uh, but uh, stinger 503s was first uh house of sid says, uh, wow, I thought the trash in New York City was bad. Yeah, New York City has a lot of trash because people dump out their trash in, like, plastic trash bags at the end of the night, but nothing is as bad as Naples. And sometimes, like, they fix the trash problem, but um, everybody who's been to Naples, I always ask them, I'm like, do they still have the trash problem? And I get about a 50-50 response. 50% of the people who go say they go in a time when they're actually picking up the trash, and then 50% of the people go and say... Uh, yeah, no, the trash problem is still there. Uh, and related to driving, um, I rented a car in Naples, and driving in Naples is one of the most scary driving experiences I think I've had in my life. Now, I've not, like, driven in India or places like that, which is probably a little bit worse, but Naples, there's no, there's no rules. Everybody just drives around, like, there's no lines, it's just, it's kind of chaos. But the most bizarre thing is that even though it's really chaotic, I didn't see any accidents. Because I think people in uh, Naples, they are just paying much more attention because they have to. Myron Stell says Naples is the opposite of Japan. It sure is. Uh, and then Cyborg Man says the most underrated European country is probably the Netherlands or Monaco. Um, yeah, I like both those places. I mean, Monaco is really small, uh, and I think the Netherlands is pretty cool. Uh, Cyborg Man says, never drive in Italian cities. I mean, I think it's, I, don't, I wouldn't say never drive, but you just have to be prepared that driving is, is an experience. And if you are renting a car in 
Naples than or in Italy or in a lot of European countries, you want to make sure that it's an automatic car because most of the cars are manual. All right. Well, this brings us... <coughs> this brings us to the end of this video. And people always want to know, when is the next live stream? That is a great question. The next live stream will be in two weeks. The next live stream will be on... Monday, November 4th, 2019 at 8 p.m. What, what am I going to be talking about then? Uh, my goal, if I can get all my notes and apps together, is to talk about the best mobile apps for travel. Uh, many of you have been leaving uh, insights as to what your favorite mobile applications are when you travel. So thank you for everybody who provided some insight to that. That'll help me start up my list and my apps to do that. Uh, so uh, hopefully that's what we do in about two weeks. But if you want to stay up to date on that topic, you can follow me on Facebook for more updates. Well, as usual, I won't say goodbye because I'm going to because I'm going to because I'm going to see you all in the next video.